you know, the, the more part of it. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. Then Dixon, right? To me, and again, I'm not quite sure what we're going to see Thursday night in terms of offensive philosophy. I'm sure it isn't what we've seen the last four weeks, but that to me is still the major concern. Absolutely. There aren't going to be two guys with 120 catches. No, so I don't see it. I don't see it. It's not going to happen. But, but what you're going to get in, instead, I think, is uh, is to try to make it more of a West Welker kind of thing with Stokely, where, where you, you're, you're just doing things that, that get you those seven or eight yards. You're not going to be able to impose your will on the other team in the middle of the field. And Ed Von Golden is a freak. I mean, he was a guy who, you know, is strong as much as anybody who's going to hit it. And most of the team is on. That's just the reality. And, and so, you know, and then you lose a Dennis Pitt who's just developing into a superstar uh, tight end and had a big year last year. These are, these are guys that are not replaceable over the short term. And, and it's just a matter of trying to fill. If you, if you can get back, you know, uh, two-thirds of their production. And in a sport where, you know, small, small businesses are good. But if you can get back third of that production, you're probably going to be fortunate and you've got to make it up somewhere else. Absolutely. We're talking with Peter Schmuck, who is down at College Park, getting ready for the Maryland season over at 410-467-WBAO, 1-800-767-WBAO. Give us a call if you have a question or comment for Peter. Uh, Peter, I said at the start of the camp, I thought Elvis Dumerville may have been the steal of the offseason around the NFL in regards to just getting a quality player. Uh, they stole him. Darryl Smith, though, may be the more significant pickup on this defense. He has been rock solid in replacing Ray Lewis. The more you see him, the more you like him. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, 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 the fact that you can get someone with that kind of experience that, that is really, you know, showing what he showed in training camp, it, 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 just, it just makes for a much more stress-free situation uh, for Dean Lee's and the defensive uh, coaching staff. And, you know, they're both huge, huge, uh, uh, guys in the, in the greater scheme of things. And, you know, I think the hell the is going to be the defensive player of the year this year. I just have this no kidding. Because I think people will still have to focus on Suggs. They'll still view Suggs as the primary guy they got to focus on. It's going to be impossible. You know, if, if these uh, linemen stay healthy and below you factors into that, obviously, if they stay healthy, it's going to be hard to stop this line right now. And, and as you said, you know, you have to really talk about the, the secondary because that's where the question is. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and the questions are safety and quarterback and who's going who's gonna to step up and is uh, Elam Gus going to be able to, to, to jump right in and be that guy uh, from the, the start? He probably will be that guy eventually if he isn't right away. Um, but I still think that defense is better on paper than the last defense. I think it's a big defense. It's a faster, deeper, uh, more aggressive defense. And, you know, we'll see. But... You know, last year, the defense kind of stepped up at the end, but that wasn't the race in classic defense last year. No, it was not. Then don't break, make him earn it inside the uh, red zone, and, and teams weren't able to. I still think that it's going to be uh, it's going to be a learning curve on uh, Thursday night against Peyton Manning and Denver there from a secondary standpoint. But let me ask you this. Steve Bishotti, how's he used him? during the Ravens State of the Team press conference after the Super Bowl, said they would not make the same mistake they made 0-1, keeping the team together to make that Super Bowl run. Now, depending, I guess, on how they do now, could this be a model, team for other teams? Of course, a lot depends on who you bring in. The Ravens seem to have brought in some really quality people, but is this something we may see down the road if the Ravens have a lot of success? Hey, listen, man, you've got to go younger, quicker when you're coming off the Super Bowl. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, like you said, they learned their lesson uh, a decade ago, and, 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 they, and they prepared themselves to be in this position rather than, uh, okay, we want the Super Bowl, what do we do now? Because we've got all these big towers, we've got to dump some of them. Um, you know, they, they, they have been the model for late round drafting because they've had to do I mean, we've been very spoiled in Baltimore. You know, we just want to complain about the 15 years or whatever with the order. But, I mean, how many Absolutely. This is one of the great runs in NFL history the uh, Ravens are on right now, by the way. Three AFC championships in five years at a Super Bowl. That is almost unprecedented. And drafting successfully. This is an amazing tribute to all those guys. The uh, Eric Acosta, Ozzie, everybody uh, in the scouting side and the player, player development side. It's just an amazing thing. They, 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 have, they have perfected the art of late, late round drafting. Uh, and, and they've done it in a, in a systematic way. They don't just say, okay, here's this year, what do we need? 
they, they've done it by drafting people developmentally for a year or two down the road, and that puts them in this position. This is no accident that, that, that they're in the position they are right now. And, and but they're also, and I think they're catching a bit of a break in the division. I think the division is, is softening up. But I, I, I'm disputing people who know more than me, I guess. But um, I, I don't see the Browns with a huge threat. And I, and I again, the Bengals are a good team. Um, but Andy Dalton is going to have to prove the division last year. And, and so, uh, you know, this is a, a Raven team that's going to grind. It's, you know, it's not going to be as exciting probably. It's going to have to grind more because, you know, they have some downfield uh, threats. But they, you're right, they don't, they're not going to be able to, to, you know, get 15, you know, 10 interceptions a, a week in the middle of the field. Exactly. Be that. That's a great point. Last question, Pete. Um, I, I think it's ambitious to think anyone uh, uh, on the field, off the field with the Ravens think that the Ravens are just going to walk out there and not and not feel the loss of Ray Lewis. And not so much on the field, but in practice, in the meeting room. Um, and <laughs> this is the first time since this team has played a game in 96 that Ray Lewis will not be on opening day. And, and I'm sorry, I, I, you just do not replace a Ray Lewis like that. And I think his losses in subtle ways is going to be felt. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I, mean, I think it's time. I think it's time to move on. Don't get me wrong. But I do think people are kidding themselves if they think that his loss is not going to be done. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's pretty obvious. The ring was kind of the glue, the emotional glue that held that defense together. And the whole team for that matter. Um, but it wasn't Ray anymore in the, in, the, in, the, in the competitive sense. It wasn't the Ray Lewis that we've known. And, and there comes a time we have to make that transition. And, and that transition may be difficult this year. But, but they do have strong players. They have strong personalities. They just don't have Ray Lewis. They have... You know, they have, they have uh, an Alvin Zuberville who's been kind of a quiet kind of presence. They have uh, uh, Zuba Blue who is capable of being that that animated guy. And you got Melody who, who, who leads by example. They're, I think they're going to be all right. But I, I, just, I don't disagree with you that, that this is going to be a different emotional uh, framework for this team. And, and we're going to have to see how it goes. Hey, great job. Be great perspective. Uh, enjoy the opener down there at College Park today. Randy Ansel's made a real commitment to the Baltimore area the last four or five months, and I uh, know there's a lot of people up here pulling for him. Yeah, I think he's got a uh, Sunday ticket plan for the Orioles. That's how much he made that, it. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother man. I will talk to you this week. Great talking to you, buddy. Have a good day. Thank you. Peter Schmuck, WBAL with the C4 Fridays, and of course, does a lot of stuff with us in sports and the outstanding columnist of the Baltimore Sun. When we come back, we're going to hear from Ed Dixon, who obviously plays a huge role right now in the offense with Dennis Pitta out. This is the Ravens Saturday Huddle on AM 1090 WBAL and now WBAL TV+. Plus. Stick around. We'll be right back.